We are at the blindside flanker role then for the player power rankings. This is my effort to rank the top 10 players in every position to close out the year with the Rugby World Cup still fresh in our minds. Who are the best players in their position on earth? I did this earlier in the year and it just feels right to do this now. And uh, this position is, is one of my favourite positions on a rugby pitch. It's one that I played many times myself. And it's kind of the, the defensive totem of a team, isn't it? It's someone that, that quite often does loads of the unseen graft that allows a team to go and do what they do. So quite often these are the unsung heroes, but I'm going to be putting them front and centre on this one. Um, so let's get into it. Please, as ever, leave your comments. Tell me what you think. For example, a comment on the last video, or well, a number of comments on the last video, pointed out that I'd missed a player from the list, and I certainly did. Lou Diaga, I am sorry. Because of your injury, I kind of forgot. My bad. I'll, res I'll, I'll um, sort that one out on the next one. And good to see that Lou Diaga is also back training as well after a very serious injury. So good news there. Uh, as for the blindside flanker, um, oh, also, yeah, by the way, um, give the video a thumbs up. That helps. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps spread the word of the channel and uh, hit subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss anything on these player power rankings which are coming thick and fast. As for the blindside flanker, I'm going to start with number 10, Aaron Wainwright. Um, I was surprised to see he's still only 26. He's been around for ages and he's been in and then out in the wilderness for a bit and now back and very much a key part of Wales moving forward. He has resurrected his career under Warren Gatland, whose man management skills are brilliant. And this feels like a guy who would have been so gutted to kind of be left out by Wayne Pivak. Warren Gatland's brought him back in, pumped up his tyres a little bit and he has repaid him and some. He's been brilliant. Whether that's operating as number eight, backing up Tao Lupe Falatao or on the flank where he seems to have done his best work. Um, he made his debut at the age of, what, 21? Like I say, been out in the wilderness, had a great World Cup. Um, and you might remember him four years ago, man of the match in the quarter final against France for Wales. And he looked like he was going to be um, a fixture in the team moving ahead. And it looks again like that could well be the case moving forward as he closes in on 50 caps. Aaron Wainwright, welcome back to the top 10. Uh, number nine, Seb Negri. He is dropping down a few places from the last time. And that kind of reflects the way that things have gone for Italy. And Seb Negri hasn't been able to do the things that we've seen him do in the past to the same effectiveness. Still a very, very good player and a classic old school blindside flanker. Massive hits and lots of them. And six foot five, what was he? Zimbabwe born, moved to South Africa, part English mother. So he moved to play lower leagues in England, then got spotted by Italy, who his dad is Italian, and he moved to Benetton and he's thrived since he's been pulling on that Azuri jersey. 29 years of age, still got a lot of miles in the tank. So plenty of opportunity for Seb Negri to move back up the chart. But he is at number nine, just behind Jamie Ritchie, Scotland's captain, who was also dropped down a couple of spots. Jamie Ritchie, Another player closing in on 50 caps for his country, captains them, 27 years of age, a rangy runner, a bit more of a kind of modern day blindside flanker, not quite so much the, the, the classic big bruiser, although he's a, he's a big unit and he's just got a massive work rate as Jamie Ritchie skills as well, but he, he just grafts, grafts and grafts some more and um, you've got to love a player like that. Um, into the top seven then and... A new face in the top 10 and this also highlights how the position of blindside flanker is changing a little bit in international rugby in fact in just rugby in general you're getting a lot more interchanging between the various shirts there's 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 not as many players who are like they are just a number six and and that's what they are same goes for number eight and number seven to be fair and Juan Martin Gonzalez is a perfect example of that he has worn all of the back row jerseys for Argentina. The reason I've put him in the blindside flanker list is because number six is the number that he has worn most often for Argentina. And he's a proper talent, only 23, already, what, over 25 caps for his country. And he is going to be a fixture in that team for many, many years to come. One of the heirs to the throne of Matera and Crema, who are moving on in years. Gonzalez is a fresh face and has had a big impact already. Really talented athlete very quick, very skillful, and um, yeah, I, I like the cut of his jib a lot. So Juan Martin Gonzalez, number seven. And it's a similar story for Wales' Jack Morgan at number six, another player who can operate right across the back row, and he's played number eight for Wales, he's played open side for Wales. I suspect open side might be the position he ends up in, but again, the reason I've got him at blindside flanker in this list right now is because this is the shirt that he's worn most often when he's played for Wales in what? 15 caps that he's played so far. 
He's such a special talent. And what's interesting about this, you know, I'm speaking as an Englishman here. Jack Morgan's the kind of guy that if he was English, he may well have been completely overlooked because he's five foot 11 and 16 stone. And, you know, not, not someone massive. In, in England have got a lot of depth. And as a result, they tend to pick players that look the part. Jack Morgan is a player that just every stage he plays on, he looks the part. And, he, play, and he, um, he looks the part in terms of how he plays. And he just gets better and better. The bigger the challenge, the better the performance. And he seems to relish it. And the way he not only played in the World Cup for Wales, but the way he led his Welsh team with his words and with his deeds was, to be honest, inspirational for a young man, 23 years of age. The way he played in that Australia Test match, you know, nose bloodied, and just still put in a world-class performance. Um, I absolutely love this kid. And I think whether he's still on the blindside flanker list in the uh, in the player power rankings I do in the future or not remains to be seen, but he's definitely going to be involved in them and moving upwards, I would suggest. Uh, into the top five then, and Anthony Jalonch, who is also moving up the chart. He was at number nine, I think, last time because he'd been injured for such a long period of time. He's not only back, he's managed to win his place back in the starting French 15, which with the comp competition in that position for France is no mean feat. And you can see why, because the work rate and the engine this guy has got is absolutely massive. And when you've got players like Dupont and Jalabert or Untermach and, and Peno and Aldrich, you need guys that are going to just hit rucks and hit people. And Anthony Jalonch does that for days. That is not all he can do. He's a proper all-round player, but he does that incredibly well. His defensive work is his superpower. He's a deserved number five at blindside flanker. And he's um, still only 27, so plenty of time to move up that list. I would imagine and I hope that we see Pablo Matera moving back up the list as well. He was previously number two. I would, I would argue in years gone by, he has been a world 15 player one of the best in his position or one of the best players on earth and arguably the biggest name that wasn't involved in a rugby world cup he got injured just before it which was a massive blow to argentina their captain their talisman and when he wears a six on his jersey he just smashes people <laughs> and you love to see it 30 years of age almost 100 caps He's still got miles in the tank, especially as he's having the slightly lighter workload of um, of playing in Japan. I think that could see him, meaning he will last a little bit longer for his country. I certainly hope so. Pablo Matera, number four. At number three, same position as last time for Peter Amahani, who one of my favourite players. Just the, the fact that he never cracks a smile, gets on with his job, plays so hard, so tough, and has got more to his game than just that toughness. Uh, he's a he's a class act. 101 caps, British and Irish Lions, a team that he captained, and I wonder if he's going to captain Ireland as well. I know he's he's no longer captain of his province, Munster. Does that mean the door is open for him to captain Ireland, or at the age of 34, will Andy Farrell not go that way? That remains to be seen. I'd love to see it. Um, he is a legend, a living legend, and I love him. Uh, number two. Now, previously, it was Courtney Laws at number two. It's Shannon Frizzell now. I still think I would have Courtney Laws at number two if he was still available for international rugby, but Courtney Laws has retired from international rugby, which pains me uh, as an Englishman, but fair play. He made that call, and as a result, Shannon Frizzell is the number two. It was a tough call between Frizzell and Omani for the two and three spots. I've gone with Frizzell because he just had an incredible Rugby World Cup. We now have an heir to the throne of the great Jerry Collins and the great Jerome Kano. No one since has filled the six jersey until Shannon Frizzell, who has made it his own. So it'll be a shame that he's off for a sabbatical in Japan. He will be back wearing that black jersey and he is a fearsome customer with and without the ball. Um, yeah, the damage that he can do is... He was so good in the World Cup, wasn't he? He's really, really grabbed that jersey and made it his. And he's, I mean, it, it, it speaks to the talent of the next man that he's above all of these names. But the number one, quite easy to pick, to be honest, Peter Steph de Toy. Just simply one of the best players in the world. Absolutely world class. And there was no better example of that than the last time he played. When he was a man of the match on the very biggest stage of all, when his country needed it the most. One of the great 
individual performances you will ever see in any rugby game ever. Peter Steff Toy at the Rugby World Cup final was sensational. And there is no question he is the number one. But have a little look at the top 10 overall. It's a pretty good list, isn't it? You've got some youngsters coming through like Jack Morgan, Juan Martin Gonzalez, Anthony Gelonch is still only 27. So you've got a, the sort of middle of the pack are youngsters coming through. And the top four are, you know, world-class names. Um, and rightly, Peter Steff Toy on his own at the top. That is blindside flanker. There were some other names that I considered putting in. Tangi Tangi Valu for Fiji almost got there. Lewis Ludlam for in England was in my thinking for the top 10. And there's some players in the future that I think we'll end up seeing like Tom Hooper for Australia, uh, Ryan Baird. Um, but tell me what you think. Is there anyone else I've missed? Do you think the order is wrong? Who would you have where? Let me know. Get stuck in in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. And I will see you on the next video when we'll be doing... Open side flanker, of course.